Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Q and Andy Japandi, where I answer your questions about life in Japan. And I know it's been a while since I've done this Q and A, and a lot has happened in that time. I gotta say, hey, that rhymed. So for one, I'm trying out this new little fuzzy thing on my mic. I noticed、uh, my lovely mic, the Shure MV7, sounds amazing, but the little windscreen it came with. Didn't always deal with plosives all that well, so I decided to slip this bad boy on for my old Zoom H2N mic, and、uh, we'll see how it goes. I also decided to literally switch around the view, so it's literally the opposite of my usual view, which is just me sitting on my bed. So instead of the fan off in the corner, you get my fridge <laughs> and、uh, it's a bunch of other stuff as well. And I also have my monitor right here in front of me, so even without my glasses, I can see it much clearer than、uh, when I was off in my bed, where I have to like squint and like, what's the question again? So, we're trying some new things out here at、uh, Andy Talks Japan D HQ, if you will.、Uh, with all that said, let's get into the questions, huh? So, question one: How does it feel to be、uh, finally done with school? Well, guys, at the time of this recording, it's been. About two weeks since I graduated with my bachelor's from Lakeland University of Japan. In a word, it's tremendous, surreal, even <laughs> as I've been saying for a while now.、Um, for the past two weeks, I've mostly just been trying to relax as best I can while applying to jobs, going to interviews, trying to get that job so I can get that V I S A. Des yo nay. But to be honest,、um, since I only just recently graduated college,、um, I don't think it's fully sunk in yet that I have actually graduated college.、Um, I don't think that's gonna fully sink in until fall semester starts up next month, and、uh, I'm not in school anymore. So right now, it just kind of feels like I'm on vacation, doing job hunting, stuff like that. So there you go. Question number two: Are you going back for your masters? Well. <laughs> that is something that I posited a while ago, and I've gotten some pretty、uh, mixed responses to that. Most of them saying it's not really worth the ROI,、uh, just because you pay a whole lot for、uh, graduate programs, and you don't really get much in the way of a return on that investment for the most part. But I will say that I am open to the idea of going back. For my masters, it'd be my NBA, Masters of Business Administration. If I were to go back,、um, I am open to the idea. But that being said, I don't exactly have the funds to、uh, be going back to school right now. So if I were to go back, it would have to be through、um, the company that I work for, or just saving up a heck of a lot of money to even honestly consider going back for my masters. And plus, most、uh, graduate programs advise you to wait like at least three to five years before applying to the program, so you can get some real-world experience before actually applying to the graduate programs. So, like I said, I am open to the idea, but right now it's、um, ways away. If I even go for it. Question number three: Do you think you'll ever move back to America? Well, this is、uh, this is a real tough one because.、Uh, With these past two weeks, I know I said that、uh, it's mostly been kind of like vacation, relaxation time, as well as doing a little job hunting and things like that on the side. But to be honest,、uh, I've just been doing a lot of thinking about where to go next, not just physically, but、uh, you know, career-wise as well. And you know, doing all this、uh, job hunting and stuff kind of brought me into considering going back to America、uh, just for. Uh, more employment opportunities, but right now I just don't have the money to realistically consider going back to America. Like I'd have to be dead ass broke and have no other option、uh, for me to go back to America right now. But、uh, as far as going back there in the future, a lot can happen in a short amount of time. I am open to the idea of going back to America at some point, but. For now, my goal is to stay in Japan, get a job, and、uh, just live out here for a little while till I、uh, figure out some more stuff upstairs. Question number four comes from longtime viewer Jim S.、Uh, what's your job status? 
any difficulties getting a job, especially as an older graduate. I will say that right now is a bit of an inopportune time to be looking for jobs, uh, especially in Japan, because I found that a lot of jobs, uh, namely English teaching jobs, hire in cycles. So they usually hire like every uh, semester for the most part. So the main hiring season is in the spring, but there are a few smatterings of hirings um, post summer leading into the fall semester. Um, and that's what I've been trying to take advantage of is, you know, seeing if there's any opportunities out that way. And not gonna lie, it's pretty rough, um, mostly because they don't do a whole heck of a lot of hiring in the fall, but also like, I don't have any teaching experience. And a lot of these uh, English teaching places are looking for uh, more experienced teachers rather than fresh grads, which uh, came to a surprise to me because I figured English teaching was an entry level job, right? But here they're looking for more uh, experienced teachers. Uh, but I know that's not the case with, with all the English teaching gigs. I know there's some that are more entry level. So just a matter of uh, finding a gig, getting a visa and uh, getting where you fit in, man. So question number five, where do you see yourself in five years? Where I see myself in five years, hopefully with a uh, halfway decent job <laughs> and uh, being able to do more video production work. Um, that's something that I'm very passionate about is video production, editing, shooting, the whole bit. Um, and I definitely do wanna do more of that. And I felt like back in 2020 and 2021, I was really hitting my stride as a videographer, you know, just getting out there, doing the gigs, meeting a whole bunch of new people and just really going for it. But for some reason this year, 2022, woo, kind of fell off a little bit. And, you know, I could say like the main culprit was, well, it's, you know, my last year in school. So I got to wrap that up and rightfully so. And I was pretty busy with my internship the first semester of this year. So even if I did get a whole bunch of gigs, I probably would have had to uh, cancel on those uh, just because I was too preoccupied. But it just kind of is what it is. Um, with Japan slowly starting to open up again, I'm feeling a lot more optimistic about uh, not only more gigs in video production for myself, but uh, for my own self to uh, get out there and uh, make that quality content that I've been hyping up for the past few years now. Question number six. Do you think you'll ever move in Japan outside of the Tokyo slash Kanagawa area? Now, with uh, my job hunting, that is something that I have been considering uh, because there are a lot of job opportunities out, uh, namely in the Kansai area. So I think like uh, Osaka, Kyoto, Kobe, uh, those areas, I've been seeing a lot of job opportunities out there. Uh, there's a couple here and there in like um, Hokkaido and some like Fukuoka and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, the vast majority of the job opportunities are in Tokyo and Kanagawa. Aside from a few errant ones outside of that environment, that's kind of the main place for uh, foreigners to find a variety of jobs. Whereas if I were to move outside of that, I'd pretty much just be rele relegated to English teaching and I'd only have a handful of companies to work for. So if something happened, um, I'd basically be shit out of luck. So while I would love to move outside of the Tokyo Kanagawa area, uh, just to see different parts of Japan and to meet up with friends who live outside of that area, um, I just think career-wise, it's, it's not a good move for me. Uh, both literally and figuratively, <laughs> it's not a good move uh, because I basically only have a few options versus staying here and having uh, much more options and opportunities, especially as it comes to video production. But even if I just did the Joe Blow English teacher stuff, uh, there's much more opportunities out this way. Now, question number seven. Have you considered doing videography slash YouTube full time now that you're graduated? Um, it's something I've kind of touched upon in in other videos, but yeah, I have considered doing it full time. But uh, like I said, right now I'm not getting a whole heck of a lot of gigs, uh, but with things starting to uh, ramp up in terms of uh, Japan opening up and things like that, I can definitely see uh, the possibility of me doing videography slash YouTube content creation 
work at a full-time basis at some point. Uh, it's not gonna be anytime soon, so don't don't go freaking out in the comments like, oh my god, he's throwing away his college degree to go work on YouTube. Ugh, get out of here, bro. Um, so I'd see that as more of a long-term goal in in the uh, realm of uh, where do I see myself in five years. Not only working uh, with other YouTubers and other businesses and production companies and stuff like that, uh, but also being a YouTuber in my own right. You know, that's something that I think this year has really taught me is that. Um, while the whole freelance video editing thing has been pretty good, it is heavily reliant on just a few people. And if those gigs fall through, then pretty much fucked, right? So you have to have a, uh, a solid backup plan that might involve getting a, a J-O-B uh, for that V-I-S-A. Um, but that might also be getting off my own fat ass and uh, making my own quality content, if you will, as well as live streams and and things like that. So I think that's the uh, the main takeaway that I've learned from this year is to uh, work on my own shit as well. So question number eight, name a favorite college memory. Now, as you guys know, I've been in college, well, in and out of college uh, for a number of years now, for the past 18 years, we'll say. I've been trying to get uh, my post-secondary education. So I've kind of run the gamut in terms of different college experiences, both as a traditional aged college student, as well as somebody who's uh, much older. I would say uh, my favorite college memories were when I was more traditionally college aged, uh, back when I was at Urbana University at Urbana, Ohio. Um, just hanging out with my friends, playing a lot of games, watching a lot of anime, and uh, hanging out, <laughs> you know? Um, doing late night Taco Bell runs and going on long walks, just talking about life universe everything it may seem kind of simple looking back on it now especially considering all I've, I've done since then but even now i really treasure those memories and uh, hope everybody is doing okay because you know it's it's one of those things like once you graduate college it's it, it gets a bit harder to stay in contact with everyone um thankfully i've stayed in contact with with most people and i'm really glad that uh they're doing okay out there I'm also, also glad that uh, I had those those memories to treasure, even if I uh, only went to Urbana for uh, one year. So I'd say that was a very critical developmental year for me. So question number nine, what videos are you gonna make now that you're not studying abroad in Japan anymore? This is something I've really been thinking about uh, since graduating is, well, the hell am I gonna put on this channel? Because like the whole point of this channel was to showcase my study abroad experience because I really didn't see a whole lot of other people currently talking about that. It was mostly people from a few years ago before the uh, you know what. Uh, but now that I'm all graduated with my bachelor's, I think it's going to be a lot of experimentation just to kind of see where I fit in within this whole Japan content creation sphere um, just simply doing the ye olde basic J vlog stuff like going around to the hot spots in Tokyo and filming it and getting like a bajillion views. Uh, those days are long since past so I feel like I have to be more deliberate with uh, my choices in what I film and things like that. You know maybe a bit undercovered as far as uh, Japan YouTube content creation goes. I'll try to kind of get out of the typical like Tokyo kind of showcase some more obscure locations and uh, I'm also really interested in talking with people as well to get their um, experiences you know I have a lot of friends out in Japan who've you know done similar things to me and they have their own uh, different experiences with that as well so I'd love to interview them to get their own takes on uh, different matters in Japan and the last question the perfect 10 was the 18 year journey all worth it in the end? So from graduating high school in 2004 to 18 years later in 2022, woo, graduating from college with my bachelor's. I'll say yes, without a doubt. I've experienced a whole heck of a lot of stuff in those 18 years. And it's kind of wild to think about that. I've literally been an adult half of my life at this point. I've experienced a lot of things that many people have not. 
um, going the typical life route of graduating high school, graduating college, getting a big boy, big girl job, and just riding that out to the end. Had to drop out like three times. Been in the Navy for five years. Was stationed out in Yokosuka, was stationed out in San Diego. Got out, went to school in, in Michigan. Didn't quite work out. Was still figuring shit out upstairs as well as, you know, what I want to do. Moving forward with college, you know, I took a break. I uh, was working with my parents for uh, video production stuff. Uh, went back to school in North Carolina, staying with my brother in his uh, spare bedroom. And uh, finally making that move to Japan, having everything fall apart, not even a few months after arriving, uh, but still somehow managing to uh, make it all work out in the end. I'm glad that I documented most of it. Um, YouTube wasn't around in 2004, unfortunately, so I wasn't able to get the super duper early years. And I'm also glad that I've been making these compilation videos as well, just to showcase uh, the whole journey. And I know a lot of you guys really like the, uh, the long form content. And it's also good for the people who weren't around back in 2008 uh, to get a glimpse of uh, what the heck I was up to back then. Doing this YouTube thing for as long as I have, you know, it really puts a lot of things into perspective. And I know for some people, doing YouTube may just be all about the numbers. And, you know, since I've been doing it for so long, my numbers aren't as high as other people who've only been doing it for a few years, and yet they blow up. But for me, it really wasn't about the numbers. You know, it was about doing it to document my life, to show people that, you know, if you put in the work, you can uh, do whatever you want. Whether it's to go to Japan, uh, whether it's to graduate college, even as a uh, somebody in their mid-30s, <laughs> you know, or whether you want to go to Japan to graduate college in your mid-30s. And I wanted to make the videos to show the work instead of just talking about it in a highlight reel and be like, I did it and you guys can do it too. Look back at my old videos when I was uh, at my brother's house in North Carolina to when I was at the old guest house living in the box out in Nakano Shimbashi to moving out here to Kawasaki. You can see it all, man, and you can even go further back as well to my old videos when I was stationed in Yokosuka, uh, when I was still out in Ohio. To be able to document the vast majority of this journey has been tremendous for me. Um, and it's really helped put into perspective a lot of things. Looking back at all that and actually seeing the, uh, the come up, has it been worth it? Hell yeah. So yeah guys, that was today's episode of q and Andy Japandi, a life after college Q&A. And if you have any questions about life in Japan, whether in college, out of college, doing the Joe Blow English teacher stuff, or just gallivanting around Tokyo, leave them in the comments down below and your questions could be in the next video. So with that said, this is Andy, sign up for now. As always, forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.